Hello, Ken Weller here with New Tech Inventors. Uh, what I wanted to do today was um, go over a few things. I was up late last night uh, editing a video and just posted it uh, early this morning. So um, already I've received a lot of comments about that video on my new 3D print farm. And uh, one of the, th the things that I was wondering about was uh, in that video, as I'm putting the shelves together, that, uh, that real fast moving guy that put that last shelf together, actually the bottom shelf on the right hand side was up one notch too high. And after I shot that video, I realized noticed that and I thought well I wonder if anyone else will notice well if you look in the comments on my last video you'll see that somebody had an eagle eye and did notice that but then if you go a little farther in the video to this section right here uh, where I'm showing the shelves I actually zoomed in on that lower one to uh, show that I did correct my error there. Uh, I make mistakes all the time. Another one is in the uh, title here that comes up, My New Print 3D Print Farm Part 3. Well, obviously I didn't mean to say that. What I meant to say was my new 3D print farm Part 4. <laughs> See, I even messed up there. So, um, yeah, we, may, we all make mistakes and it's uh, good that we work together and when we can help each other by pointing out things like that. Uh, some of the comments also uh, bring up things and uh, I wanted to clear the air a little bit about a few things there. One, also in this video, I'm talking about how I'm using power strips to power the printers and so forth. Um, and uh, I think one comment was that, you know, you can't put too many printers on a circuit. Well, with my background in electronics, obviously I know that. And um, what I've done has been to actually look at my printers and figure out uh, what the power demand is on them. And this is a question with a lot of people that are thinking about setting up a print farm or even a small one in your home where you're going to run four or five printers, maybe six. Uh, it, it is a concern. And so you need to know what your uh, printer requires as far as power. You can't always go by, well, it's got a 360 watt power supply or a 200 watt power supply. That doesn't tell you how much it actually uh, draws. So what I wanted to do in this video was show you a couple of things and um, show you how I determine uh, how much power I need and how many of these I can put on a 15 or 20 amp circuit. And what I'm going to show you today is how I've taken and let me get the camera here so I can get you up close and personal. But um, Basically, I have a little meter here that you can pick up about anywhere. And it has this clamp on it. And what that clamp is for, you take a normal power cord and you strip the end of it. And then you clamp it either around your uh, uh, line or your uh, neutral wire. And that will, the alternating current is going through these wires and back through the other one and alternating. And this meter will tell you how much current is actually being drawn, AC current, by the, the printer. Now, I've got a King Room power supply here and printer set up. And you can see it's drawing zero amps. Turn the power on. And it jumped up to about two or three um, two or three hundred milliamps, which is 0.2 or three amps. So now it's running 
and just in a stable position and we're only drawing one amp. Now I'm going to go to the printer and let's um, preheat. Let's preheat the nozzle. Okay, it's preheating. The nozzle's on and we're up to 0.6 amps. 600 milliamps. So that means that the nozzle itself added 500 uh, milliamps or 0.5 amps. And then I go back and now I'm going to also put power to preheat the bed. And you can see we jumped up to 2.5 amps. So we actually uh, are drawing about one point and it's stabling off at about 2.1, 2.2. Now, that is with both heaters, the nozzle and the bed on at the same time. And as another example, I'm going to go over here and um, run some servos. And if you notice the servos running don't affect the amperage. They draw very little current uh, proportionally to the heaters. Uh, now the printer is uh, down at about 0 0.2, 0 0.3. Um, and let me go back here. And that's because we're uh, reaching temperature. Now, the King Rune uh, has a 300 and I believe a 360 watt power supply, 24 volts, so it will preheat real fast. It draws quite a bit of current. But um, that's that's what I wanted to show you. I wanted to uh, let you know how I'm coming up with uh, with these numbers. And as you can see, I've got my little helper here. Um, but put him down. It's got to go. Sorry for the interruption. Uh, to give you an overview of this, on this printer at um, 0.6 amps for the nozzle, uh, and then it goes up to 2.2 with both the bed, that's the worst case scenario. So in a worst case scenario, I figure that... Um, on a 20 amp circuit, I want to stay around 16 amps. Um, 16 amps is a, a pretty reasonable uh, threshold. So uh, my maximum, if I turned on all of my printers at exactly the same time and had them all preheating at exactly the same time, I would still be able to run uh, six or, you know, at least six um, of the King Rune printers. I'm sorry. I could run at least four to five of the King Rune printers without having any worries at all on power on that one uh, 20 amp circuit. And I could run five to six of the ANET printers on that 20 amp circuit without any problem at all, being very conservative. And um, to just to prove a point, um, I actually had at one time upstairs in my limited area, I had eight King Rune printers running and printing and I also powered up um, six ANET printers, ET4s. And as I was powering them up, I, I had them all powered on, and I was going through and I was setting the bed temperatures and preheating the ANETs. And when I got to the sixth ANET printer, uh, the 20 amp breaker tripped and shut down all printers. 
they all had resume print they all re resumed when I restored power and um, had no problems with the print which is saying a lot for resume print uh, but the other thing is that these printers were averaging to trip that breaker they were only they were averaging about 1.43 amps each which which really was probably a little less than that because I also had a computer plugged into that same circuit that was turned on and um, a light an LED light so um, so you, you can uh, run several printers on a circuit okay sorry for the interruption there the camera seemed to run out of uh, memory so I've changed the chip now and I think where I was at I was talking about um, the average power consumption being about 1.4 amps per printer during printing and that was a combination of 14 printers, 8 uh, King Rune KP3s and 6 ANET uh, printers. Of course with that many I uh, reached my 20 amp capacity on the breaker and it did like it should and tripped. So that's just a little bit I wanted to talk about that. Uh, one other thing on on the comments, a lot of people were saying, why am I using ANET? Why am I using King Rune? I think I've explained that in replying to some comments, but I'll tell you, I just started out buying printers. And um, as they came on, if there was a good price in the ANETs, were a good price. I've not received any free printers or any special pricing from anyone. Um, there have been a few cases where I had a make offer and I would make an offer for four or five printers and um, uh, several times those were accepted and I would get them cheaper than what they were listed for on eBay and uh, but a lot of these printers when they first come out uh, they will have a real good price on them promotional price and it's good to take advantage of that and I was fortunate enough to take advantage and that's why I purchased those particular printers. Um, a lot of it had to do with the price because I found out that they're all basically working on the same concept and I could get good prints out of almost any printer that I purchased. So um, why not go for the less expensive ones? Now whether or not they're going to hold up as well over a long period uh, I've stocked up on bearings and um, other consumable parts of the printer that I think may start wearing and I'll be able to replace those uh, as the need arises. So those were a few things that I just wanted to pass along and answer some of those questions that some of you had on the comments. And I'll be doing a few more of these videos as we go along and picking out specific comments. I thank you for the comments, thank you for watching, and happy printing.